This session is with Great Panther Mining, and we have with us today Rob Henderson, who is President and CEO, and uh, I'll turn it over to Rob to tell us all about Great Panther. Wonderful. Thank you very much. So I'm going to take about 15 minutes to, to talk to you about Great Panther and leave a bit of time for questions at the end. So Great Panther, we're a producer of gold and silver, and we have three mines located in Mexico and Brazil. Um, I will be making forward-looking statements, and the first slide I'm going to be sharing with you today is just an update on COVID-19. You know, we've been infected like everyone else on the planet, but we do have very strict protocols in place at our mines. All of our mines are running. We did have a shutdown in Mexico in the second quarter when we had a government-mandated shutdown for two months. But we're, we're back and running right now, and you know, health and safety of our people is a priority. This slide just gives a summary of our Q2 results. Our Q3 results are coming out on November the 5th. But the second quarter for us was a really good quarter. Um, we saw a number of records in cash flow EBITDA. Um, we had a free cash flow in the quarter of around about $12 million. Cash flow from operations of around $20 million on revenue of $67 million. So it was a very good quarter. We ended Q2 with $60 million in cash. And our, our mine at Tucano is our major producer. It produced 35,000 ounces, which was a big increase over Q1. Um, we're on track at Tucano to, to produce 120 to 130,000 ounces at an all-in sustaining cost of uh, 11.50 to 12.50 per ounce of gold sold. Our two Mexican mines, Topia and GMC, primarily silver producers, they're on track to meet their guidance of 2.4 to 2.6 million ounces of silver at an all-in sustaining cost of 17 to 18 dollars per payroll ounce. Uh, we released our Q3 production numbers. They're showing that we are on track to, to meet our production for the year. So we've got a year-to-date production of 107,000 ounces with Tucano, you know, producing the lion's share here. One great panther as a company, we're growing. We're gold and silver producer. We focused on the Americas, and we have a diversified portfolio in very good jurisdictions, namely Brazil, Mexico, and with a development project in Peru. So all three of those countries have a great mining tradition and a great place to do business. We are actively exploring. Um, we have a budget of $11 million this year to look in, around our mines at Mexico and Brazil. Um, I came into the company in April this year. I'm an operating guy, an engineer, and I'm really happy with the team that we've got. I think we've managed to put key positions in, in in all the places that are needed. And my focus is on continuous improvement in the operations, just keeping an eye on costs and making sure we can maintain steady production to meet our guidance. We do have a <coughs> refreshed board, David Garofalo, ex-chairman, CEO of Goldcorp, is our chairman right now, and he's certainly given us the mandate to pursue acquisition opportunities. It's our belief that we are um, on the small size at 150,000 ounce producer. In order to become more relevant to institutional investors, we need to get bigger. So we are looking at acquisition opportunities to complement our portfolio. And last but not least, you know, I do believe we've got an attractive re-rating potential. Great Panther is not the company we were 18 months ago. We are <clears throat> now a much bigger, much broader focused, a much more diversified portfolio. And it's my job to get the message out. The <clears throat> sustainability, of course, is a very important um, component of what we're doing. And we do have a very good track record of working in our communities and getting our social license. So the work that we've done in Mexico, particularly over the last 15 years, and the work that our predecessors have done in, in Brazil over the last 15 years, 
is all very well captured in this inaugural report of ours. So we do have our first sustainability report. Very happy to put it on our website. But, you know, social license is a priority for us. And I think this report certainly reflects very well what we're doing with our communities. Where are we in the world? So Tucano, right in northern Brazil, on the Guiana border, north of the Amazon. Topia and the Sierra Madre Mountains in Mexico. And Guanajuato is in central Mexico, right next to the, the city of Guanajuato. Coricancha, our development project, is about three hours east of Lima. And it's a past producer <coughs> where we're looking at um, potential restart options there. These two slides now are just a summary of management and the board. Um, so as I say, I, I came on in April. Nick Weiner came in in May. Nick is our VP Exploration in Brazil, and he's a very key man. Um, he's based in Brazil. He spent two decades down there looking at exactly what we <clears throat> need to do. It's a regional gold exploration around our property at Tucano. So Nick is itching to get his fingers onto the regions and put some deep drill holes in there, which we have had no deep drilling done in our you know, 90 kilometer by 30 kilometer um, <clears throat> long uh, tenement in Brazil. Jim Zandra, I'm CFO, he's been with the company for nine years. So we've got a, a mixture of old and new, and I'm, I'm certainly very happy with the team. Um, the board side, as I mentioned, Dave Garofalo is our chair. <clears throat> Dave is you know, opening doors to us, which were previously closed. He's got massive experience in the industry, and we we're certainly very blessed to have him as a <clears throat> our chairman. When Dave came on, he brought on Joe Gallucci from the Laurentian Bank and Alan Hare, who's uh, ex-CEO of Hud Bay, uh, a very good technical head. So we've got a strong and diversified board giving us very good governance. Story is about growth and Great Panther back in 2018 was primarily a silver producer. Half of our revenue came from gold, half came from silver. And <clears throat> production was in the order of 52,000 ounces uh, gold equivalent. 2019, we completed the acquisition of Tucano in Brazil. Our production jumped to 147,000 ounces of gold equivalent. And <clears throat> our mix became 83% gold. So we are very much a gold producer now. We've seen a big jump in our production. And we'd like to carry that going forward. So we do have a very ambitious drill program. We are certainly growing in terms of our capacity to make money. Um, cash in the bank is growing. And we certainly want to carry on that trajectory. On the financial strength, um, as I say, we finished the quarter in June at $60 million cash. Um, we're in much better financial position now than we were at the, at the end of last year, and we're, we're continuing to add cash into the <clears throat> coffers thanks to strong cash flow from our three mines. On the exploration and development side, this is really is what the story is all about. Um, we don't have a lot of resources in the books. Um, mines in Mexico are um, deep. They're narrow vein. They're high grade. You cannot drill them from the surface. So we're restricted to uh, drilling from underground. And that means you only got a couple of years of inventory ahead of you at any one time. So we do have a commitment in Mexico to spend an order of $4 million in exploration in order to keep that you know, two year window ahead of us. And, we have done that successfully for 15 years, and I believe we'll be carrying on doing that for a long time. So Mexico is going well. Brazil is where we're spending the, the lion's share of the exploration budget. So we have $7 million allocated for Brazil, and that's a mix of near mine and regional. So Tucano is a, an open pit gold mine in the north of Brazil. It was found by Anglo-American. It was first developed by Gold Corp as a heap leach. Bidel from Australia came in and developed it further and put in a 
grinding and leach circuit, which we're running today um, very successfully. It's a, it's a great facility. We're getting recoveries in the order of 92% from the sulfide and the oxide ore. So to Tano, we do expect 120 to 130,000 ounces this year. And the big focus is on the exploration potential. So we're located in the in the Greenstone Belt in the Guyana Shield. It's host to some of the world's largest gold deposits. Um, the the region, which I'm going to show you shortly, we have a massive tenement. We've got an order of 2,350 square kilometers, and it has not seen a deep drill hole yet. <laughs> But the immediate focus is to look at the the near term, so the near pit exploration. We've com completed this program, um, drilling around the Tapareba pits in the south, um, mainly looking to convert some of the inferred resources into measured and indicated. And we should be getting these numbers out <coughs> in um, uh, early December. But we're certainly very confident that we're going to be replacing our reserves at a minimum. So we've had a successful near term, near mine drill program, and the focus now is shifting out to the regions. So this picture here, a little bit busy, but it shows our you know, 2,300 square kilometer tenement. It's about 90 kilometers long on the diagonal and about 30 kilometers wide with the to kind of mine structure being smack in the center of it all. <laughs> this we've done the a, a lot of geophysics. The previous um, operators, Bedell, did a fair bit of, of groundwork. We've got geophysics. We've got structural. We've got a lot of the um, remote work done, and a, a number of structures have been identified through the geophysics and through soil sampling, but. As I say, not one has had a drill hole, a deep drill hole in it. So we're targeting Mutum and Saraminda. Mutum is 20 kilometers from the plant. Saraminda is about 10 kilometers from the plant. And we have a drill rig mobilized as we speak, and we're hoping to be drilling Mutum in the next couple of weeks. So um, all going well. Uh, we should have some results out on Mutum in December. So that's pretty exciting for our next car exploration geologist. The the other potential we're looking at is the underground. So this is a banded ironstone formation. Banded iron is you know a very generous host. Um, some of the biggest mines in the world, um, like Muscle White, for instance, which I had time with when I was with Kinross, are you know, very generous hosts. They um, they can be big, and what we're seeing here is that the mineralization does extend pretty much vertically beneath all of our pits. And back in 2016, Bedell did a pre-feasibility study um, done by AMC consultants, which envisioned a 1,000 ton a day underground mine, which accessed four gram a ton material. So this um, study envisioned a 40 to 50,000 ounce per annum producer at 1,000 ton a day. Now our, our mill, at Tucano is a 10,000 ton a day mill. So the underground will, will never fill the mill, but we do believe that underground certainly has the potential in the future to keep a steady stream of gold to supplement open pit, um, which we will find um, in the regions and along our existing strike. So exploration strategy is to certainly look for more open pit material with the underground mine being a, a high grade sweetener. In Mexico, the Guanajuato complex, it's we, um, Great Panther have been operating here for 15 years. But historically, it's you know one of Mexico's most prolific regions. And the Guanajuato mine itself, the Vieta Madre, has been exploited for over two centuries. So it's a very extensive system. We're mining mainly from the San Ignacio mine right now. Um, the veins, again, pretty deep pretty continuous, and you know, we, we do think GMC is going to be running for quite a while. Up in the north of Mexico, we have the Topia Mine. This is up in the Sierra Madre Mountains. It is a um, 
a silver mine, which we produce in a, in a base metal concentrate. And here, <clears throat> we, again, we, we produce about 1.2 to 1.3 million ounces um, every year at an all-in sustaining cost of uh, 21 to 22. So that's a little bit more expensive than GMC. And this is due to the fact that the, the veins are a lot narrower. So even though they're high grade, they run about 600 gram ton silver, they're narrower than the veins at GMC. So our focus right now is, you know, how do we bring down the costs at Topia? And we believe we can, but both Topia and GMC are generating pretty good cash flow for us right now. Last but not least is Cori Cancha in Peru. So this was last mined by Neostar in 2013. So it is a past producer. It, I believe it ran for about 40 years um, prior to that. So we've got all the infrastructure in place. We have a mill. <clears throat> we have water and power, et cetera. But the trick is you know, how to get payable ore. So it's in a very mountainous region. Uh, the grade is high. But it's narrow. So we're looking at doing a cut and fill type mining method. Um, previous operators have gone long haul mining and they ended up with too much dilution. So we're challenging our Mexican mining engineers to um, get creative on Coricancha and come up with a mine plan that will give us uh, decent enough economics so we can make a, a restart decision. So we're hoping to make a decision on Coricancha next year. And that's about it from me. We are listed on the TSX and the New York Stock Exchange, the market cap in the order of $300 million uh, US. So I will now um, end the presentation and be open for questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rob. Uh, I think uh, the, the question on my mind is, uh, what kind of, of capital would be required to restart Corey Kensha? Is that any kind of uh, number that you have in mind? It's it, it's not going to be big because we do have all the infrastructure in place. We have all the mine you know headings in place, the access is in place, all the roads. So the restart is going to be a bit of development, and so yeah, we're we're still working on what that number is, but it, it's it's not going to be a big number. Number. So essentially, we need to get sufficient development in place that we can get enough headings to fill the mill. So that's what we're working on right now. But yeah, it, we don't expect a big number for the, for the restart capital. There's quite a big difference between long haul and, and cut and fill. Um, was that mining method really selected to fill the mill kind of, and, and they were less yeah. focused on profitability? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, back in 2013, you know, 2012 metal prices were pretty high back then and the previous operators believed that they could you know get away with a, a more um, efficient mining method to drop costs and you know it worked for a while but when metal prices went down then it just didn't become economic again so it, it wasn't a very sustainable mining method so we're looking to get a bit more um, sustainable so we can you know withstand low metal price environments. <clears throat> And uh, lowering the costs at, at Topia, I'm sure, is uh, something you're you're very focused on. Yeah, you know, it's it's a great mine. The guys there are doing a really good job. Uh, it's it, you know, it it's it's really small scale mining, and so we've got a number of small mines. We've got a number of contractors. So the management of it is is, is, is tricky. It's and so, but we've identified a lot of opportunities there. We we've managed to get our, our mill um, in a much better nick. So we've got our mill running more efficiently right now. So we, do the, we can do the tonnage and pushing up the tonnage goes a long way to, to dropping your, your fixed costs. So I think we're, we're on the way to um, dropping costs through increased tonnage and now the challenges to the miner to, you know, to get more efficiency out of the mining guys. <laughs>